So, turns out tonight's events were a tad dramatic. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest amphibia moments. Fail, and nothing will ever be the same. Not gonna happen. This should be fun. For this list, we'll be looking at the scariest, creepiest, and most generally horrifying scenes in Disney's Amphibia. Attention all frogs, toads, and newts, this list is not spoiler-free. Before we get started, let us know who your favorite Amphibia character is in the comments below. Number 10. The Mushroom Zombies if you thought the zombies in Gravity Falls were terrifying, at least the main cast wasn't turned. Well, at least most of them weren't. Second thought, gonna flip the script. Can I eat your brains? Yeah or nay? Amphibia's zombies can be credited to one Apothecary Gary, a mind-controlling mushroom. When Hot Pop is desperate to get the kids to listen to him, he douses them with Gary's potion. It works all right. The problem is it works a little too well. Why don't you kids go outside and play? Yes, Hop Hop. Hooray! The kids and most of Wartwood are turned into mindless mushroom zombies, which, you know, is pretty dark. Luckily, Bessie has quite the appetite. I know. No matter how important my ship was, it didn't give me the right to use mind control on you. Uh, no. You think? Heck no. Nah. Number 9. The Nightmare Simulation Yes, this is just a projection, but its sole purpose is to show you the stuff of nightmares. Your personal nightmares. Oh, please. Nothing scares the Great General Yunnan! Scourge of the Sand Wars! Defeat her of... Oh, no. This segment begins with the ominous appearance of Olivia's late mother. Creepy imagery and parental disappointment couple up into a vision that leaves us all triggered. How could you let this happen? I'm sorry, mother. I did everything I could. Well. <laughs> Enough! Too real, Matt Brawley. Too real. Yunnan's afraid of grub hogs, as it turns out, which wouldn't be so bad if not for the way they materialize, triple their size and with huge, sharp teeth. The embodiment of Marcy's fears isn't much better, and we get an atrocious, giant, conjoined Anne and Sasha monster. It's too late. We want nothing to do with you ever again. Number 8. Anne's Powers Running Out this one's so dark because it feels so real. The invasion on Earth is in full swing, and Anne is up against Andreas mostly alone. Time's up. Looks like your powers are finally running out. Oh no. It's over, and you were so close to. It's been shown before that her powers take a lot out of her, and before this fight, she'd never used them for an extended period of time. This is why when Anne's powers run out, not once, but twice, it's everyone's worst fear come true. It was expected, but it still made our hearts sink. Come on, Anne. If only we could let her know we're all behind her. Anne isn't someone who gives up easily, so seeing her with no fight left is heartbreaking, especially when Andreas wasn't showing any signs of restraint. Thank the Cosmic Guardian for Sprig, huh? Two for one, eh? Why not? Stop! I have a message from Leaf! Number 7. The Cannibals This is one of those episodes we can't believe made it past the Disney censors. Cannibalism is something even adults don't want to think about, never mind the target audience for Amphibia. Were they not sweet enough? Did I goof the recipe? Oh, dearie me. This episode sees the planters and Anne stopped at a cozy bed and breakfast for the night. Little do they know, their gracious bullfrog hosts aren't as kind as they seem. Ooh, looks like I've got the geezer. Age to perfection. Polly awakes in the middle of the night, only to discover Anne, Sprig, and Hop Pop tied to a stake and nearly roasted in their sleep. If that wasn't bad enough, after Polly manages to save her family, the bullfrogs meet a rather gruesome end. Hey, do you hear that? Did you leave the sink running? Oh dear. Number 6. The Heron Attack Though we find out what happened to Sprig and Polly's parents around the middle of the second season, the true gravity of the incident isn't shown until the series' second-to-last episode, All In. Oh great! Andrea's brought some giant herons! Those aren't just any giant herons. 
Those are the giant herons. You mean those two attacked our parents? Painted in red, Hop Pop's flashback is downright chilling. The planter house and farm are lit up in flames, and Hop Pop arrives too late to save the parents of his grandkids. But not too late to fight back. Never thought I'd see them again. Although his first explanation in the episode after the rain is only shown in stills, the art style is eerily dark, and Hop Pop's narration makes for a terrible sense of dread around his survivor's guilt. If I'd just been there, I know things would have been different. Ever since then, I swore I'd never let my family down again. Number 5. Grime Losing an Arm Dismemberment is definitely up there on the list of worst possible things that can happen to a person, and Amphibia was foreshadowing it left and right. Most of us theorizing throughout the show's airing assumed it was Anne who'd lose her arm, given just how many illusions were made. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to cut open the grub hog! Uh, what now? In the end, it was a misdirection for Grime. In the middle of saving Sasha during their fight with Darcy, his arm is completely removed. The whole fight is insanely intense, but this moment has to be, without a doubt, the worst of it. Oops, looks like he's disarmed. Get it? Disarmed? <laughs> Number 4. Sasha's Sacrifice In hindsight, this moment should have been a pretty good indicator of just how dark this show was about to get. How about we settle this the toad-fashioned way? Trial by combat! Back in season one, things between Anne and Sasha were about as rocky as they could be. After a fierce duel between the two girls, Toad Tower begins to collapse, per Wally's assistance, of course. Wally, what did you do? What? I thought we agreed. Wait, could you not tell I was winking? I'll curse you, one eye! When Sasha is knocked off the building, Anne and the planters keep her from falling, but it's obvious they can't hold on for much longer. Accompanied by Lean On Me, this is one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the entire series. Hey, Anne. Maybe you're better off without me. Somebody took me. Number 3. Marcy Getting Stabbed After the season 1 finale, many of us wondered what was in store for the second season's finale. Somehow you've still got the gift, kid. Which means, I can't let you live. Welp, probably shouldn't have asked. True Colors is one of the best episodes of the entire series. Despite also being one of the saddest, Sasha attempts to destroy the Calamity Box, Marcy's secret comes to light, and King Andreas's betrayal is revealed. No, it can't be. Oops, looks like I spilled the tea, as you kids say. <laughs> I did it for us. We thought we'd seen it all, but the very end of this episode had the worst in store. Marcy's on the path to redemption until the opportunity is taken from her. The fact that this is a kid's show was the only reassurance we had that she'd be okay. Marcy! Number 2. The Creation of Darcy What's a fate worse than death, you might ask? How about possession? Honestly, Marcy, I like you. Always have. I begged the core to consider an alternative host, but <gasps> alas. Haley Chu, the actress who voices Marcy, was amazing up until this point, but her screams of agony in this moment? Harrowing. This entire scene really is the stuff of nightmares. From Marcy getting grabbed by her face, to the slow lowering of the helmet, to the core's neck cracking and sinister smile. Why, hello there. Of course, this would only be the beginning of the horror. Once Marcy becomes Dark Marcy, or Darcy, things get infinitely worse for all parties involved. Everything is ready, my lord. The rebellion is in shambles and Earth is ripe for the taking. Then all that's left is for us to do what you could not. Kill Anne. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Dr. Johan's Corpse I think we just found Dr. Johan. Eh, old and gone. Let's move it along! Darcy's versions of Anne and Sasha. We only want what you want. What? What did you just say? We want what you want. Always and forever. The frog skin monster. Frog skin. 
Seamstress! Ah! The Seamstress! Andreas letting Sprig fall. That's the thing about friends, isn't it? The more you love them, the more it hurts when they go. Allow me to demonstrate. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Anne's Literal Death Please don't do this! Don't go! I don't know what I'll do without you! You're my everything! Death in kids' cartoons are usually always euphemized in some way, whether it's a fake-out, a one-off character, or a fate that's a brand safety equivalent to death. The expectation is that we're not seeing the protagonist pass away. Much less are we seeing them in the afterlife, though heavier cartoons like Adventure Time have managed to showcase it. Either way, Anne's sacrifice and her visit to the afterlife is pretty crazy. I have my whole life ahead of me to make bad choices and learn good lessons from them. Or I had my whole life ahead of me. About that. The copy of her maid right before she passes is what returns to Earth, but nothing changes the fact that the original Anne Boonchoy isn't around anymore. Incidentally, her family and friends' reactions to her death leave us with enough trauma for the rest of our cartoon-watching lives. Don't cry, Sprig. It's okay. Saving this world was the best decision I've ever made. Thanks, Matt Brawley. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.